Hey there, I am Tim Burnett. This is the Solo Hunter Podcast. Hunt, film, survive, and thrive, whether at 10,000 feet or in your own living room. This is episode number four, Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter. Does anybody know Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter? I hope you do. This guy is awesome. You gotta have a story. Oh, forget the story. Everybody's doing something. We'll do nothing. They say, what's your show about? I say nothing. There you go. It's about nothing. I think you may have something here. Stealthy Hunter. Does anybody know Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter? I hope you do. This guy is awesome. I got to know him, gosh, has it been two years ago now? A year ago? Sometime he came down to Reno for a trained hunt event. I remember sitting there in the Cabela's, um, whatever they call it, meeting rooms or whatever. I was there as kind of a guest of, of Kenton's and, and Cabela's kind of a meet and greet. Uh, definitely not competing in the competition because these guys would have stomped my butt into the ground. But I remember standing there and, and I was in a conversation with Dave Baronio and and Mike there at, at Cabela's, Mike Ayazi. And I remember looking across the room and I was thinking, oh man, see that tall lanky dude over there with the beard and the scruffy hair? That dude's going to kick all your butts. Um, he just had that quiet, just leave me alone strong look about him and I was like if anybody's gonna win these types of, of events it's a guy like that and that's that guy's got to be kind of a solo guy well as time passed he came over introduced himself um we got to talking and just like I stereotyped him he was exactly what I had thought very nice um we had a lot in common the dude's a solo hunter he's a killer he's probably would be ex- way better at what I do than what I am um, just a really nice guy, and we, we were able to, to talk and hit it off. Then a year later, he came back out to the event again. Um, my wife and I had him and his wife and his kids out to our house for some dinner. We talked a little bit about their podcast, Hunt Harvest Health. Um, got to know Hillary a little bit, Doc Hillary, and talk about some of their goals and things and learn a little bit about their gardening and just just everything. And so it was really cool to get to know Ryan. When he was here in Nevada just a, a week or so ago, on his hunt, um, he shot, shot me a text and said he's packing off his critter and getting ready to head home. And I was like, man, I will drop ev- everything. So I was hunting antelope and I drove four and a half or five hours to Elko to meet him. And we met in a parking lot, had some dinner and just had a great conversation or lunch, I say lunch. But that was the that was one of the most fulfilling conversations that I've had in a long time, that three hour lunch. And we didn't record a single bit of it. And I'm kind of glad we didn't because it was really for us, for, for me and, and Ryan. And I think we both kind of benefited from it. And then we went and, and found a nice shady spot and recorded this podcast. So excited to share with you and show you if you're watching the video portion of this, Ryan's monster. I mean, this guy killed a big buck in an area that I had hunted several years and never seen a deer of that caliber. So uh, good dude, good story. I learned a lot from it. So I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter. So I'm here with Ryan Lampers of somewhere in Washington. I know you told me. Granite Falls, Washington. Granite Falls? Granite, Granite Falls. Granite Falls. Yep. Yep. Still and, a Guamish River. And Ryan um, actually just came off of a hunt here in Nevada. I did. We are in some parking lot, as you can hear as some a of the cars spot drive by. In a this, parking lot. This is a shady parking lot, that's for sure. We were driving and just actually, you know what? We should have got the rubies in the background back there. But You're right. It is what it is. Ryan was gracious enough to meet me out here um, after his hunt. He's hunting about four or five hours east of where I've been at in Nevada, and I had a little bit of luck, and yeah. I got a text this morning that said I'm packing out a critter, so. Yep, I was packing it out this morning and got off the mountain, and I'm already up here. Yeah. It was great. It's a quick day. It was. Yeah, this was actually uh, a quicker hunt than I anticipated. I, I had another five, six days planned out, but. Hey, I'll take it. My wife will be happy. I'm coming home. So yeah, all that. So um, tell me, let's talk a little bit about that hunt. There's other things that I mean. We just had dinner and, or lunch, and yep. we talked about a lot of different things that Ryan has going on with his Hunt Harvest Health podcast, and for sure, you know, some ideas there of of, of what they're doing. And uh, Ryan and I have talked before. They had me as a guest on their podcast um, 
this has been a couple months ago when yeah. you guys were down here yep. in Reno doing a train to hunt. And, Got to come to your house and have yeah. some food and yeah. and talk and yeah, get so, your story. Saw the solo lair and all that fun stuff. We got to see it. My kids got to play with your kids. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was fun. <laughs> Ryan just came off of his hunt literally just today. Um, I'm still dirty, Tim. I can't I even wash. You didn't wash your hands. We just ate lunch, and I realized I haven't even washed. I've had these hands on on deer meat and uh, you name it for the last week. And yeah, yeah, literally just off my hunt. So well, I'm glad I, I didn't go like in for that too. bro embrace when we when we when we <laughs> met don't, up here. You don't want what I'm smelling <laughs> like right now. <laughs> well, that's what that big ass cooler in the back of your truck's for. Isn't that a bathtub? Oh, that is the meat hall. It could be used as a bathtub, but uh, no. The thing about this is I can get like 20 uh, gallon water jugs frozen in there. And so I've always got cold water to drink and it keeps my meat cold when I'm coming out. I don't have to go buy ice or deal with any of that. And it's great. I think so. that's kind of the biggest hassle about traveling, hunting somewhere is just getting, just getting your meat cool and having yeah. enough ice left over after being there for a week long yep, already. That's it. I mean, usually your, son, or your truck is like, bacon at a trailhead or somewhere down low in like 90 degree heat <laughs> so yeah. you want to come back to a, a nice cold cooler so. well and the farmers just drive by and think it's just another ranch box in the back of Looks the truck like it, it's like it? not even a you know <laughs> shoot if that was a yeti that'd be like a 1200 dollars yeti that would right be. there it's a man. giant it's a giant you could use that as a bathtub i hadn't even thought about it but so uh, interesting idea out on the the area where you were just hunting i've hunted that unit several times you know i've had a lot of great encounters you and I talked a little bit before you went out on that hunt, but yeah. I kind of wanted to, to pick your brain a little bit on uh, on the area and what your thoughts were. But really, f to start off with, like, what made you choose that area? Yeah, so um, I've kind of talked about this before, but uh, see, the, the best part of it about this community that I've I've gotten gotten to embrace here um, in the last couple of years is getting no guys like you. Um, who are really open with their information. You know, it's, it's nice to have people in other states and, and various parts that can kind of give you tips and a little bit of intel. And so, um, you know, finding that I drew this Nevada tag, um, immediately, you know, I just start getting as much info as I can. I talk to you, I talk to a few other guys down here and um, everybody kind of feeds me a little bits and pieces and it's great. And so, um, yeah, I actually went to the spot that I went to because of your your intel. You had told me about a couple of good bucks in there, so. I wanna get even before that. Like I don't, I'm not thumping my chest because I mean, people either they're going to see the buck you just killed sure. or they've already seen it. It depends on how I edit this together. But <laughs> like I'm not, I don't wanna, it didn't, that wasn't my intention of, you know, you went to the area that I told you to go to and just sure. happened to find a good deer. Sure. Um, how did you pick that unit? Because I know Nevada gives you five choices. Yeah. So what, you've hunted Nevada before, but I want to kind of know so, from my own personal, like how did you choose where you wanted to hunt? And how did you land in, a, in one is, of my favorite hunting units? This is real simple. The unit I drew last year, um, it had a few points and I, and I drew it and I loved it. And uh, so what I was looking for this year when I put in is obviously the first couple choices in Nevada, you kind of want to shoot for the moon right. and just the way their system is set up. And then I figured third, fourth, and fifth, I'm just gonna put in for units, I'm gonna put in for the unit I hunted last year, which is a, it's not the most difficult unit to draw, but I wanted to hunt, and I really wanted to hunt this year anywhere in this desert, just because of the winter we had, um, the moisture content. I just knew there's gonna be some good growth. Um, whereas my, you know, up north Idaho, Washington, our deer got hammered pretty hard. And I just figured it's gonna be, there's gonna be some good antler growth out in this desert. So. Um, Real simple, I was driving back from my hunt last year and I love to scout on my way home. And um, just a visual, I drove right past this range and it looked good. And so, you know, I just kind of take note as I'm driving back and I'm looking at these mountain ranges and, and checking them out. And uh, sure enough, I, you know, I go home and I kind of look at it and I'm thinking, ah, wow, the draw odds aren't too tough on that hunt, um, on that unit. And the country is real similar to where I was last year. And it's not that far away, so I thought it's 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 a good choice. Probably a little easier country to hunt it is. as far as it, it like access and all that. That's one of the things that kind yep. of draws me to it is the, the mountains aren't any easier. I mean, it's straight up or straight down. Yeah, there's a few but, more roads, um, but you can still find plenty of areas to get away from roads. Yeah. And uh, honestly, on this hunt, where not last year, I was easily easily I had no problem getting away from people. This one, I was a little more worried about it. Mm -hmm. 
but I found no people. Well, so I've hunted this unit four years or whatever, that unit. I didn't draw it this year, except yeah. I'm kind of trying to draw something close to home because my boy's 12 and yeah. with baseball and football and everything else, we don't have the time to travel. So I'm kind of stocking points to draw something close. But the thing that I found with that area is I met a bunch of the locals and um, it, most of the people that I talk to that hunt that unit with few exceptions, they're all hunting the low country. They're mm -hmm. hunting around the ag fields because there's a lot of big deer down yeah. there and it's easier. You can do it after work. You can right. run out there on a quick weekend. And, and uh, you know, the first year I was out there, I got on a, a great big, tall, narrow, tight rack buck that I called Stifler that mm -hmm. actually um, one of Remy and I's friends, Joe Dibble, ended up killing that buck. Okay. Like probably the day that I was watching him, he probably killed that deer. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got in on some others, and then a couple of years ago chased, uh, actually missed a really big, nice four by four, and and a buck that was with him that looks a lot like the buck you just killed, and probably brother, just not quite as big, you know. <laughs> but um, so that unit, I mean, I've probably hunted it more than any other unit in Nevada, right? And it was just fun. Yeah, and you know, I had a lot of people talk about the ag fields and hunting down low, um, and honestly it's probably a great place to be, you know, down by those ag fields. There's probably monsters down there. Um, I just have for myself personally, I have a hard time staying down low. I always feel like I should be up top. Um, there's gonna be somewhere up there that hasn't been looked at where there's gonna be a mature animal. And honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd almost rather take a lesser deer up there than down below, right. just for myself. Um, I don't know how many giant deer I pass on the drive up to the top of the mountain, but it's probably more than I want to know about. But um, no, it, this unit definitely has a little bit of both. Had um, had the low stuff, had low sage flats, and guys, where guys could drive around and probably have great luck at just killing good bucks. Um, but it just, it's also got the steep stuff for you know a guy that really wants to get away and and, and uh, sweat it's, a lot. It's far and away. It's not the best area in Nevada. Right, right. By by no means is it like, are we like saying, hey, go put it for this unit. Like, sure. in fact, I would recommend you don't. There's other units that are a lot easier to, sure. to hunt and, and that and probably have bigger trophy potential. But it's just something about that mountain range. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and like we were talking about earlier, it's it's electric. Like, it's it's oh, the it's areas that I got into some big trouble with lightning. And, yeah. Um, I met a guy that got struck by lightning up there and his friend left him for dead. Drove out, went off the mountain, drove the truck back into town to call the coroner or whatever it was. And this, yeah. you know, this guy comes to and hikes his butt <laughs> off the mountain, you know. And, and I've been in there a couple different oh, years man. when you hear something and you're like, well, it's clear blue sky, you know. And then you climb up over the ridge and darkness. It's a disaster. Yeah. You know? so. Oh, I had some of that this Did year you? too. Last year, I really, um, I took note because last year I was 30 yards from getting hit by that bolt. And um, that's just not something that I'm used to up in Washington. Uh, we don't have the electricity in the air like you guys do down here. This year, uh, this year I felt, you know, I was actually, one of my attempts on a buck, on this buck, um, you know, it, the wind kicked up and it kicked up hard and it, it kind of broke up the noise. It was dead quiet, wind picked up and I made my move just figuring it would muffle some of the, the shale rock I was going down. Well, it didn't take long before I started feeling a few raindrops and then I started hearing the rumbling and I knew what was coming. And so I had to go back up, grab my pack and then go, actually I, I got it, brought it down a little bit, set it under a tree and took off down and uh, crawled up in a contractor plastic bag and rode that thing out. But I wanted no part of the top of that Kissed mountain because man, goodbye. it was blowing up up there. So. Tell you what, I don't know if it's all the mining around it or whatever, but there's something about that mountain range. Man, it'll yeah. attract, it'll attract a storm from miles around yeah. to to that area. I was constant. It was, crazy. It was just constant. You Every could just afternoon. see dark clouds coming in, and um, yeah, I had two two big electric storms up there. So, okay. and not that many days of hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, um, it's. So uh, what else? Anything else happened on that hunt that was exciting? Oh, so, man. The whole hunt was exciting. I mean, you know, the thing about it is, uh, you know, every hunt I go in, I'm just, I'm just figuring it's going to be the hardest thing ever. You know, I just, I just anticipate that. And for whatever reason that is, it, it gets my mind to a place where yeah. I'm not going to give up on it. Um, I just wanted to find a giant buck. That was my goal. I saw a lot of bucks, um, you know, good bucks, like threes and fours, pretty decent bucks. And then I got 
I laid my eyes on this one and I knew that's, that's the buck I'm going to go for. And like I said, it took three different stocks to get in on him. Um, and I finally got in within 43 yards and, and, uh, and just hammered him. And he went down and um, got into some, some aspens and tipped over down there. But yeah, one interesting thing that happened, I was, uh, I was breaking the deer down and I heard something. I looked up. It sounded like a bear, like a bear was bawling, like a baby bear. And uh, I looked up just to see something streaking through the woods. And uh, right above it was a big old golden eagle. And it was chasing this two-point buck. And this two-point buck comes blasting and it stands right in front of me about 10 yards. And uh, gosh, I wish I would have had the whole thing on film because that eagle was basically dive bombing. I mean, it was so close, it looked like the thing was twice the size of that two-point. Yeah, they and, probably uh, are. <laughs> yeah, it, it huge... looked it. And then, uh, you know, the eagle took off and the two-point kind of walked by me before he, uh, he caught on to what I was, what, you know, I was there. And that was pretty crazy to watch. I wish I would have got that on film. Yeah, so <laughs> speaking of film, like, you remember what we talked in the podcast you guys did with me a couple yeah. of months ago? I, shoot, well, how long has that been ago? A few been months ago. Two or three months ago, yeah. Yeah, gave you a little, did we give you the challenge three months in ago. the podcast or was that after the fact? I think it was after, yeah. No, you didn't include that in there? I don't remember. Maybe we did, <laughs> I can't remember, but. So, uh, yeah, uh, self-filming. Cause you were obviously hunting alone. Like you did the solo hunt. You yeah, know, you I did, did the, the solo hunt. Thing. I had every ambition in the world to get this filmed um, by myself, but it's hard. I mean, I respect you and Remy for what you do. Cause it's hard, man. You, you get focused on just finding a buck, but then you got this other thing. You, you got your tripod setting up and you got your camera and is it going and all this other thing. And, and uh, I found myself kind of forgetting about that part and just focusing on finding a big buck. So I don't know how you do both and be good at it. It's just, I lost it. It is like when it got tough, I just kind of forgot about the camera and setting it up. And it was like, oh, I got to get the legs stretched out on the tripod and do all that and get it going and get it positioned right. And yeah, I don't know if people realize how hard that is um, to do it completely by yourself, but it's, it's I think, difficult. I think, um... I'm very disappointed in you, by the way. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I was, man, I had every hope of doing I've, it. And I've then challenged I got so big many different. Buck fever. Yeah, I've challenged so many different guys. And I'm just like, ah, there's no way in hell, man. That guy wants to kill a big buck too bad. He's not going to do That's it. That's but it. it's like, to me, the camera's, um, like, I've got it dialed now to where it doesn't take away from the actual stock and hunt as much. Right. But what it takes away from me is mentally. Mm -hmm. So like you were just saying there is, is is mentally when you're not thinking about the cameras, you're just thinking about hunting. You're yeah. just thinking about um, what what kind of, where can I get to to find a big buck? There's no buck here. Where can I go? You're, you're constantly in hunt mode. And I, I talk about it a lot on film sometimes of, you know, being in hunt mode and being in produ producer mode. Yeah. But if your mind isn't in finding a quality big buck and it's constantly bouncing back and forth to the cameras it's not the cameras that are getting in the way it's your mind right and that's why you haven't that's why you rarely see us or myself i'll speak for myself you know i've killed some big deer yeah but it's been a couple of years you know sure. and then when when i focus when the when the production side of the show or, or what i do is is at a higher level the quality of animals aren't at the high oh, level, I, you know. I um, see it. I can I can see what you're talking about because the intensity of trying to get in on a big buck where you know you got one shot. I don't even want one iota of like the tripod ticking or something to do with the camera. Yeah. I've I'm like laser focused on every footstep, um, and you know you're tensed up, and the last thing you want to think about is something else. So I just know how. It's like little tiny things make or break you getting a big giant buck. Um, and yeah, as much as I would have liked to have that all filmed, I just yeah. didn't get it done. I'll tell you what, for your Couldn't sake, I'm glad you did. <laughs> you know, because nah. if, and I find myself, I've done it. And when you get into that mode and it's like, when that's a priority that I want to yeah. film this hunt and get it on film. Yeah. Um, you know, you might you might go after deer that maybe you otherwise wouldn't go after. You know, sure. you'll go sh chase a, just an average buck because it's like, hey, I want the challenge of this. Yeah, I'll be happy with it, but I want the challenge of trying to get it on film. Yeah. But I think when I get to your level and I've killed so many big bucks, yeah, 
I, then maybe I'll step uh, back and put a camera behind me and, yeah, <laughs> and settle and it, for the less. But I got yeah. a, I got a few more big bucks I got to kill before I uh, get to uh, that people point. People know you way better than that, <laughs> and they know me way better than that. You know, that's that's one thing I'm glad that I've never tried to put myself on that pedestal of being, you know, the big buck killer or the the trophy hunter guy. I mean, I love those guys. I follow a lot of those guys that are trophy hunters and that, and they yeah. get it done a lot, but I just don't have the time, dedication, or yeah. willpower, yeah. Um, or desire to do a lot of that. I, I find more and more, um, you know, there's more more hunts that I focus on where I really want a trophy caliber animal. And, mm -hmm. and last year I was able to get a, a really, what I consider to be a trophy caliber elk, you know, right. in Idaho. I shot a big um, Audad ram on my terms on free range. Yeah. Um, you know, not one of those ranches where you see hundreds and hundreds of sheep. It's like I hunted for two different trips, a total of 10 days and saw two rams. You wow. know, I mean, this yeah. was a hard desert, desert hunt. Like I want to do it on my terms, but I have focused a little more on the trophy quality of, of hunting, even though that's, it just depends on what mood I'm in, you know? But right. um, I've killed a lot of deer, but I wouldn't say I've killed a lot of big deer right. by any means. Yeah, they're, they're difficult. They're few and far between. I mean, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I knew a couple other guys that, that drew tags down here this year. And, uh, you know, we talked about this. And, you know, I think a lot of people, <clears throat> I don't know if they just, they see it on social media or whatever, and they just think it's gonna be easy. You know, you draw a Nevada tag, you can come down, it's gonna be easy. It is not easy. It doesn't matter if it's a big buck or just a buck, uh, you know, a four point buck, um, a semi mature deer, just going after them with a bow this time of year. It's not easy. The terrain's not, um, it takes a lot of dedication and, and time. And I feel lucky that I was able to get this done in five days. Um, you know, I had, I had every intention that I was going to, it was going to take me a lot longer than that just to locate a yeah. big buck like that. But so. social media makes it look easy. It does you know, make I mean, it I, look easy. And I've seen your posts these, and it's like, oh yeah, he's in big buck country. Uh, he's going to stock in. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to post that picture of that big buck tomorrow or next <laughs> week or whenever you feel like it. Yeah. And people are going to be like, oh, Nevada is so easy. No, no, you know, no. Ryan can stroll down there and smash a big deer. Yeah. That's, it's Unfortunately, so it's not. It's, it, it's a lot of luck. It's a lot of preparation. Obviously, we you know, we talk about this a lot on our podcast. It's a lot of training and prep and confidence going into a hunt, but um, there's no doubt about it. I feel lucky every time I'm able to get in on a buck. And, uh, you know, even down here in the great state of Nevada where I, for me, this is like a, a mule deer paradise. It's got so many mountain ranges and so many just different country. And it's, it's got not a lot like, of critters. It's not like a Utah where the numbers are high and mm -hmm. the, the country has a lot more cover, you yeah. know, and there's there's deer there whether you see them or not. Like here, the numbers are su substantially smaller. Sure. But um, the terrain. I think is the terrain's awesome, awesome, and part of the allure to Nevada to me is the time of year that you get to hunt these deer. Yep. You know, they're a lot yep. more visible. Right. Uh, and a buck might bed down out in the middle of a sagebrush flat. Oh, for know? sure. And where you can see him and, yeah. and have an opportunity to go in and kill him versus going into a thick aspen patch that you might walk right past him. You know, yeah, you don't want to be still him, hunting so. for, for bucks through aspen patches, but yeah, yeah, it, it's got it's got everything. Um, like I said, I've only been hunting it for two years and I've fallen in love with it. Um, hopefully someday I'll, I'll get super lucky and draw an elk tag in this state, but um, no, it is, it's just so much different, I guess, than where I'm used to Washington and, and North Idaho. Um, you actually get to see a lot of critters, you know, you get to actually like glass up a lot of different animals and, and, uh, that's unique. That's, that's fun. That's different from what, uh, I'm used to there in Washington. So, um, yeah, it's, I just feel like, uh, it's a big bonus coming down here in August, extending your season out and having one of the, this, this is gonna be probably one of the funnest hunts I've had this year, or I will have this year. Um, just cause it's a solo trip. I'm out there by myself, um, working my tail off. And I just feel like that first hunt of the year, I'm so prepped and so ready. Um, my nutrition's up, my strength's up, and then it slowly fades. Well, <laughs> you're, the end, so. you're a, I mean, you are a unique, you're a unique cast, you know, I mean, you're a good, you're like, you're good at what you do. Like, you've got that ability, you're, you've, you're, you're really focused into it and you have that dedication into it. There's not a lot, oh, I, I shouldn't say there's not a lot, but like, at that level, it's, it's few. 
You know, there's few people that have that kind of dedication and, and ability to put into it. Um, I just think I'm antisocial. And you're I like antisocial. to be in the mountains. Well, that's the other thing is like, how can a guy have fun on a solo hunt? I don't, Some man, people I, just don't get it. It is a blast. I find yeah. myself up there just happy as a clam, yeah. smiling to myself like a crazy person. <laughs> Talking to yourself like a crazy person. Yep, that's yeah. it. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I highly encourage people to experience it at some level, even if yeah. it's just for an overnighter, you know? Yeah, it is difficult. Um, you know, I think you and I have done it a lot, solo hunts. Um, but I've got buddies who are just getting into hunting. And I got one, one buddy in particular, and he, he's, get, he's just doing it. And, you know, he quickly realized it's hard, you know, mm -hmm. to play the mind games when you're used to having conversations with people. You're used to bouncing things off people or coming, you know, in at the end of the day and talking what you saw, telling hunting stories. When you don't have that, um, it's completely different. And it is tough. It's, I think a lot of people can acquire it over time, but... Um, I think I had it out of the gates. I was lucky. Mm -hmm. I've just always been antisocial, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I really, really enjoy it. And I think, um, you know, for a young guy, young hunter to come out and just be able to be by himself for seven, eight days, it's really difficult. Um, something you got to work on. For yeah. Sure. Uh, it's got to be, it's got to be what you're into because if it's mm -hmm. not, you got to love it. Force yourself you got to love it. it. And know? it's, I think it's, what I love about it is it's, it's a challenge. You know, you're, you're, playing games with yourself you're, you're challenging yourself every day up there to you know get into the right position get those morning eyes on you know you want two times of the day the morning and the evening you want morning eyes evening eyes in the best locations you can find and uh and it's just that's the game you're up there doing that and figuring out you know where you should be at this this such and such time and sometimes that takes days to find that location it too, is because where you want to be in the morning might not be where you're at you know it might yeah it might take some work to get there and if you yep. can't get there before the sun comes up that day then you got to burn a day and get there yeah. in the middle of the day and burn an evening and for the next day right you know? and that's that's if you're not willing to and prepared to stay on the mountain yeah then you're not going to get to where you need to be. And honestly, you could be doing everything right. You could be set up in the perfect spot. But a lot of these bigger bucks, what they'll do, um, they're already gone to their bed before daylight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've heard it said before, they're like vampires. And it is totally true. I never saw my buck. I didn't see him till midday. He was bedded down midday. I didn't see him all morning. Hmm. Um, but, you know, where I saw a lot of the smaller bucks, they were up and feeding in the does but he was gone already. And that was two days in a row that he did that. He was not out and visible, you know, as daybreak, but um, he'd already gone off and, and bedded up. So was he in kind of the same general area as some of these other bucks were? Yeah. The proximity, but he had just already gone to bed first. He'd already gone to bed first. Did he'd they, already found they, a nice little shade. Did they tee you off? Did they go over and feed in bed where he was at or was he? No, it, totally different places. All he, was off, he was all off by himself in a patch. Yeah. Um, these guys were in a little bit more mild terrain I could glass. Um, there was some water close by and, and that helped, but he was in one of the tougher areas in the bowl. Um, and uh, he just had a nice little honey hole down there that he no enjoyed. Safe. And, and he was all by himself. And, uh, and so, yeah, I was fortunate to actually lay eyes on him midday like yeah. I did. And um, that's where good glass comes in handy. Did he... Uh was he moving at all or was he in his bed and you just happened to glass him up? And I happened to glass him. He didn't get up and stretch or anything? He yeah, just... he did. He did. But I glassed him when I first saw him, he was in his bed. Yeah. Huh. And uh, that was the first night. And then he did end up getting up feeding, but he didn't go very far. Yeah. And then the next day is when I ended up getting down there. He bedded in the exact same spot. Really? And it took two different, two, well, it took three stocks to actually get down on him. The first stock went completely awry you know, so? the wind like, changed oh, okay it was late in the day and uh the next stock i ended up getting down in there well that's when that rain squall hit and so that blew blew me up i had to get out of there get back up to where my bag rookie mistake i went down to stock this critter i left my pack up on top well now the rain comes in i didn't have a rain jacket with me i didn't have anything my shoes were out in the open my bag, which had like my camera and everything in it, it was totally open to the elements. So I didn't cover my bag up. Um, I should have. Chipmunks were eating your sandwich. You probably. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I knew I had to get up and out of there, yeah. even though it was a 
pretty good time to be down in there with all that noise and wind. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I knew tough. I was going to re be regretting it if I didn't get back up there and cover up my stuff. So. Yeah, it's tough to cover that elevation back and forth and back and forth. That's yeah, one thing I'm brutal. not very good at. You know, it's I'll, brutal. I'll get into a situation. I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to go down there because I know I got to come back up. Oh, and you know, on a stock, it's probably the most you're moving like a sloth right you're going as slow as you possibly can that is more work oh. than sprinting yeah it's a bit. the slower you go the more tired i get the more fatigued you are you try stocking at a snail's pace for an hour oh. or two or three when you're done and it blows up and nothing happens you are spent you're just yeah. so tired um yeah, I don't know how you train for that, but. Yeah, this week on an antelope, I literally crawled. It had to have been ever bit of 200 yards in a ditch. In yeah. A, in a washout where the ra heavy rains had come and washed out because you're at the flat, wide open. But I knew that if I stayed on my hands and knees that I would stay below the brush and right. they wouldn't see me. So I crawled. And you know how tired I was after crawling that far? <laughs> I had knee pads on Oh, because you're all tensed up the so whole time. So I'm all time good, and... but the whole time I'm like, yeah. That, that low crouch and then you're looking up real slow and then you're back down and then and then you got your pack on your back and whatever else oh it's yeah it's just like uh, after just, the end of that i just had to just lay there and be like man yeah you're spent hurt. right yeah your, your body is just completely tensed up that entire time and it's it's like no workout you've ever done in the gym so you're probably a little bit we're probably similar in the fact that like when i find whether it's a deer or an elk or whatever it is and i I feel like it's in a killable position. You know, I found a deer and, and this is where he's at. Like, I'm going to sit and analyze that to the nth degree to where I can have the absolute highest percentage of a stop. Sure. I never look at something and say, yeah, I know I can go around and do this, but if I sneak through here, I probably can get by. Yeah. Like, I will never do the probably. 100% of the time, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make that first stock the most yeah. effective. And if I look back at my stock history, whether of shots, whether it's a kill or a miss, or um, you know them getting up before I can get the shot, like, like, but what I consider getting into the kill zone, my percentage is stinking high, yeah. you know? I mean, it's up there because I feel like that's gonna be my only chance, especially on a buck of, of that caliber yeah. that you just killed. You just can't be reckless. I, you you might not get that chance on that deer, let alone any other deer. Yeah, ever again. For years. Yeah, you know? it's true. Um, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's, you got to place such a high importance on everything you do in a stock mm -hmm. on, on a good buck, any buck really, because uh, we've all made those mistakes early in our careers and you never get those chances back. So Whether when you've you blown there. a big buck out because of something stupid that you did, whether you just took a maybe approach, like I think or, I can get around that tree or- Or I, just looking when yeah. you know he's still in his bed, but you right. just, your curiosity's got you and you want to look anyway. And right. Then, get, then he nabs you. And, and one of the most like, important parts as a solo guy is you don't have a spotter. You don't have anybody to glass back and say, where is he, right? So, you know, getting all your vantage points and everybody knows this, but from where you're looking on the top of the mountain down looks completely different when you're down in there so you got to look at it very intensely you got to really focus on okay when i'm there i need to be looking for that and then you got to yeah. remember it that's where the cameras come in handy for me that's is true. because i'll pull them out a lot and look at it from there and i'll Take find photo. find something and then and then go back and yeah worry about it. but on a stock you're probably you might be the same like i try to find transition points during the stock that I know that I can lay eyes on them again. Right. You know, where it's like, okay, I'm going to go up around this backside, but at that rock pile, I'm going to pop back over and I'm going to look and make sure that sucker's still in his bed. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm going to drop back and work around. And then at that snag up there, I'm going to sneak over and make sure that sucker's still in his bed. And then I'm going to pop. So I always mentally try to lay eyes on it. When, when I'm stalking a deer in its bed, I try to get my eyyes on it every 10 minutes if I can. For sure. You know, or as often as possible sure because there's I've, I've had a deer a deer the biggest buck i killed in nevada those deer early in the morning they bed down and i was mm -hmm. like sweet i'm gonna get on them went and made my move popped over they were gone yeah like, well, what the heck just happened you know went back up to the top and my buddy was watching and they had gone got up and gone around and bed like three quarters of a mile away they just got mm -hmm. he just said i don't know what happened they just got up and decided to move you mm -hmm. know and that's just the way the way they can be. They might sure. lay there all day, but they might just. Sometimes they don't. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes they just don't move all day long. It's nice, but yeah, it is. Uh, you really do have to be. 
I, I've had, I don't want to toot, toot my own horn, but I, I've had really good success on when I find a buck, being able to get in on him. Um, now there's times where he's just not in a stockable spot and I won't even attempt it. Just got to wait. You just got to have patience, I think, and, and wait it out until he gets in a spot. Because um, if you're taking a 50-50 eh, approach, like eh, I might be able to get in on that buck, it's probably not going to work out. Um, but uh, yeah, it, you just can't be reckless because it just never works out. It's, it's usually going to go the wrong way if you feel like it might. One thing I've noticed with you that, that you seem to be really good at is um, not just stalking in and making the kill on a deer, but like you're really good at finding an upper league deer, you know? You're, you're good at going to an area that, just like this one here, you know? But you're, you're good at finding probably the best buck in the area. Sure. You know, or, or like, how do you do that? Like, how do you focus on that? Or what, what's kind of your methodology to, to find that caliber of deer? Because I can go into that same unit and I'm gonna see a nice 160, 170 four by four, and I'm right. gonna go in and kill it. Sure. But I'm never going to get an opportunity to 190 inch or 200 inch buck. I, I just don't see them yeah. that often. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I can, I can try to answer that. I think uh, it's hard to describe. Like you know, obviously getting away from people, finding little hidey holes where everything looks perfect, and spending time there, spending those important parts of the day um, trying to find, see what's there. That's. You know, most hunts, it's about obviously getting away from the trails, um, finding little places that just never get looked at. Bucks grow old there. You know, there's big bucks in every every unit. Um, even these easier to draw units, there's gonna be a couple. Uh, there's gonna be some mature bucks. And uh, I think I think for me, it's, it's how I approach a hunt is, uh, you know, especially a hunt like I'd never been here before. That first day, covering country like a crazy person, just, bombing around um, and just seeing, getting lay of everything that's, that's in the unit. And then kind of making a judgment call, like I think this is where I'm gonna find the big one. Maybe I've had some intel that guys have seen him, a big one here before, or maybe this just feels bucky. And it's almost like, it's hard to describe, like you get this hunch. And I don't know if that is from just experience doing this for so many years. You just get these feelings like I should go that way or I should, I should be really focused on this basin. Um, and I don't know, it's worked. I didn't used to find giant bucks when I was little and I thought I was doing it right. Well, what I find, what's interesting and one of the reasons I brought that up is, is you ended up finding that deer and killing that deer in an area that I didn't even, that I'd never went to. And I've hunted that unit four years. You yeah. Know? And you and I talked about different places where I'd found good bucks and everything. And you looked for there and you found some good bucks and everything, but you ended up in a totally different part of the mountain. Sure than I had ever spent. And I, I, I knew that that country was kind of over there. Mm -hmm. I approached it from the north side a mm -hmm. little bit, but I looked down in there and I'm like, man, that's just too much work for me. I don't, <laughs> I don't wanna go down there, Yeah, you know? Um, yeah. And where you ended up down on that bench, you know, that's, it's not an easy place to get into. And you just found a place that um, just looked good to you, just felt yeah. right. Huh? It just felt good. It, it just seemed like where a big buck would grow old and die. You yeah. Know? Just wouldn't get looked at and most people would, get on that upper ridge and just never think to go down there. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it just, I don't know, it worked. It worked this time well, and it usually I'm does. I'm like, did he see some deer go down in there? <laughs> like how did, cause I looked down in there a lot. I didn't see nothing, you know, but I'm looking from the wrong angle. No, you know, I know they, now that you had to come around from the south side yeah. and come up over that, that real rugged saddle. That's the one thing to get about, the angle. You, you can get on a ridge and if you're glassing the, from the wrong direction, you're not gonna see much. If you're glassing, you know, from the sunny side and you're not looking on the back sides of those trees or the rocks, well, you're not gonna find much. Like I said, those things are like vampires, the big ones. And, uh, you know, being able to get a change an angle, get on the other ridge and glass back, um, you know, that's how I found this buck was, like I said, he was bedded down, um, tucked up under it, under a mahogany and just, you know, thought he was safe from everything. Probably doesn't get messed with at all down there. And from most angles, you, no one would ever see Nobody him. would see him from most angles, but when you come down off that north side, you could yeah. get eyes on him. And um, yeah, just, you know, again, it's, it's luck, but I think well, uh, you, you kind of make your own luck in a way by putting yourself in, in positions where it should, it, it feels right, it looks good. You yeah. got a hunch. Because I, I think a lot of guys, myself included, I think we've got the ability to kill a deer like that. Sure. You know. 
but if you can see it, if you can find it. If you can find them. And that's yeah. the that's where kind of the it, yeah. the magic lies with guys like you or Jason Carter or some of these other guys that are, you know, Ch Krogh. These guys that find big deer, they know how to find the big deer. Right. Keeps getting them killed probably isn't as hard as finding them. Yeah. Thing. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, I think a lot of it too is uh, probably the biggest hurdle is uh, not going after that 170 inch black. Yeah, I know, I know. That's my <laughs> that's my fault there. <laughs> you see a 170, that's a nice buck. Yeah. It's like, how do you not just want to go after a 170 inch buck? Um, and that's, that's one tough thing to try to get past because especially in a unit that's not really known for big deer, you just see a 170, that might be it, right? You don't know, but uh, you kind of have to keep tabs, know he's there, keep looking and try to find something bigger or something something that you're well, is more you, unique you got to put forth the effort because i i have no doubt that it, had you not found this bug mm -hmm. you may have spent another three four or five days and then come back around and smashed on yep. 60 inch four by yep four. yep yeah. there was another pretty decent buck in there and um you know that would have definitely been my my fallback yeah so but yeah but who knows i may have never <laughs> relocated that buck and yeah. come home empty-handed so. well that's something that i learned you know from you on this hunt and the takeaway having having in-depth knowledge of that unit and experience with that unit and from what i've seen just you know some of the conversation we had before this of just your your approach and your methodology of the areas that you wanted to go and why you steered away from the areas where i was at and different things and um you know i took Took some away from it. it as experiences i might be with with hunting like mm -hmm. there's always things that i learn from other people and that's one thing you know not to pat remy warren on the back because he's got enough people patting <laughs> him on the back because he really is that good i'm just gonna say <laughs> yes he is otherwise we wouldn't be as good of friends as we are but like um you know he's got he's got that ability and when i get to edit his videos together and cut them together like i'll listen to all the audio you yeah. know, and everything that's going on and I'll pay attention because there's a lot to learn from other people, especially someone like him that's a guide and has had a lot of experience, right. um, a lot of experience solo hunting specifically. Like I learn a lot from him. Sure. You know, I've become a better hunter over the years from people like him and you and others that I've had conversations with because I, I kind of consider myself a little bit of a sponge. I like to, I'll absorb a little bit of what everybody's Absolutely. saying um, if I'm interested in it. You know, yeah. So, well, yeah. and Remy's got, you know, he's got all that time spent in the mountains yeah. and you can't discard that. That, that's just a building block. And he, you know, he, it's, it's all those little things that he would probably have a difficult time explaining how he's able to locate it critters. It's natural. It's just natural. It's, yeah. it's something he's done so many times. He just gets these feelings. He gets these hunches, these gut instincts mm -hmm. and uh, instinct is, is hard to explain, but it's definitely a fact of just spending time in the mountains and and I get Around those bucks. too, you know, I mean, I get those instincts, yeah. I, you know, I, I, bet I can, I can get those gut feelings where it's like, shit, but, but you got to be able to do it too. Sure. You know, sure. Some people, it just clicks like, you're good. You're good at what you do, man. Well, thanks. Yeah. I, I feel fortunate and lucky every time I, <laughs> I'm able to stick an arrow in a big yeah. buck, but yeah. uh, this year started off with a bang and um, I'm so happy. I'm uh, going to go home and see my girls and my family and, um, you know, my daughter's going to be super pumped to, to see Heck this buck. Yeah. She likes the fuzzy bucks, so yeah. I'm bringing home a, a nice big fuzzy buck. So but. you kind of mentioned at lunch, um, you got some other hunts. You got some other good hunts coming up. What yeah. do you got? What do you got? Yeah. Up so uh, next, being a Washington guy, I get two bear tags. So I, I got my spring bear this year. I was fortunate to draw. Um, so I got another bear tag to fill. And I'm waiting for those berries. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, the berries are popping right now. So those bears are getting fat on, on huckleberries and blueberries. So uh, that fall bear is one that I'll they take taste, here in about two weeks. So no, good. man, there's just, there's nothing like those yeah. fall bears for me. Plus you, we render down all the bear I fat. I was gonna say, do you, do, do you render the bear fat? We do, anything? yep, yep, oh, wow. got a lot of bear fat. Um, I'll get a bunch more off of this one. You know, these bears that we're getting, you're looking at yeah. like this much bear fat on them and you'll get, you'll get a lot of jars rendered down. So um, yeah, gonna do that. And then after that, I've got a, a hunt that I'm gonna take my wife on this year. This will be a first hunt ever. She's gonna come check out what we do in the elk woods, uh, nice. Washington elk tag archery. So- um, Are those elk real vocal in that yes, area? Yes, they yeah. are. Okay. And so she's gonna be able to hear what we've all been able to hear in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully I get in some scream fests and, and pick some fights with the right bulls. And I'm not gonna be picky on this hunt. I mean, I think the first decent bull that comes in 
I just want her to see what we do. And I think she'll really kind of, you know, appreciate it and get to see it. She'll be pretty blown Make away. Make a good, solid, quick, clean kill, yeah, you know, that's something it. that's just work focused really hard. I don't want really to put her through the grinder just, and yeah. just keep seeking out a giant bull. Dragging like you know, that, blood trailing forever. I just, yeah, I just, I just want her to see what we, what we get to see and why we love what we, what that time of year and why elk hunting is so appealing to all of us. So uh, that's, that's the next hunt. Um, and then I uh, got a couple of late hunts, uh, Montana. I'll be chasing Eastern Montana bucks. And, oh. Cause and last year you hunted home. out West, didn't you? Kind of on the- No, the I hunted roots, East, the uh, year before I hunted West. Last year I went back to the East side of Montana. I kind of go- It's an eye opener, isn't it? A lot back, more deer out there. A lot more deer on the East side. Yeah. And I was able to find a big one over there. But that Western half of Montana, you don't get to lay your eyes on many deer. It's really low density, oh. but usually when you find a good one or a buck in that northwest corner of montana especially you can find a bruiser yeah. and um pulled some pretty good bucks out of there and it's it's uh it's mind numbing at times you may only see one or two bucks uh, in a week i personally hate hunting that area. <laughs> it's, it's i hate tough. it i would rather hunt out in the desert all day long yeah the big where country. you get to see critters yeah. and spot yeah. them and yeah i don't have the patience my brother he's like you he'll hike the dark timber all day long yeah and, and hopes like, for that one big one you know? yeah yeah it's it's definitely not for everybody and in <laughs> fact i know a lot of those northwest montana guys they're not hunting northwest oh, montana. Heck they're no, driving man. they're driving seven hours east yeah. to hunt their own state so yeah. yeah it's that kind of a hunt but uh no i got a spot um i'm gonna go back to this year and cool and then i got one last hunt and that's idaho um we're gonna, gonna do, do a late big, season big late season Idaho mule deer trip. Uh, I got six guys coming in this year, uh, which is don't a Don't tell me which unit it is. It's, don't tell me it's, it's that unit. It's, no, it's uh, 13. It's a, it's a big area. No, 39? No, no, no. <laughs> We're flying in, I'll put it that good, way. Good, <laughs> good. Oh, I know where you're going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We used to uh, go in there. There's I killed, strips. A, I killed an elk in there. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's gonna be great. I have yet to be in there. I've been all around the edges of it. I've never we actually drove been in, it. in. Oh, really? During it was in October. It was yeah. a, at, back then, it was a over-the-counter wilderness gotcha. rifle hunt. Gotcha. And it's like 60 miles of the crappiest dirt roads up over the top, way back down right. in. And if you get any snow, you're not getting back out. Right, right, right. Good times. Well, this is going to be not a solo trip, so yeah, that's all right. I don't know that I've ever hunted with six guys, but um, all great. Uh, it'll be maddening. You'll be walking around talking to yourself and all kinds of things. <laughs> no, I think it'll be fun. It'll be a different yeah. experience. Um, I think somebody's going to film it. And then, um, yeah, yeah, it'll be fun because we got 10 days. So we've, we've notched out 10 days on the calendar. So, you know, when one guy tags out, you know, we'll all be helping each other try to get all six tags filled. So that'll be kind of different than that's your um, work cut out for you i'm there. used to yeah. but that that's also part of the country that um you know the deer migrate to mm -hmm. and there could be a pile of deer in there. we're hoping yeah that for sure awesome we are hoping it's it's in november and any kind of weather helps so yep. Yep. Nice. Yep. But that's it for me. Jeez, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> all that. I kind of took my season easy this year. Did you? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm stoked for that. So. Yeah, I'm excited. It's it's a it's a whole new season and starting it off like this. Um, man, it's great. Yeah. Everything can only go downhill from uh, from this. Don't, one, don't so. go downhill. Keep going, man. You're doing good. You're yeah. Doing good. Well. So next time we'll have to get together and talk more. Ryan is also one of the most intriguing guys with gardening and food prep and you know all the things that i have an immense amount of interest in just yeah. no no time or i was explaining how to get to more tomatoes it. on your tomato plants. i'll tell you what i have a four foot tomato <laughs> plant with two tomatoes on it and it's yeah. infuriating yeah. the thing looks awesome yeah we're going to teach you how to self-pollinate it's going to be my christmas tree it looks so awesome <laughs> uh yeah. yeah gardening that's that's one of my big passions um I, I love I love gardening. I love food prep. Those are two of, two of my biggest yeah. biggest favorites. So well, that awesome. and hunting. Well, we'll dig more into that another time. You know, that's more your your platform. So you, for sure, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll see how that all goes. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I appreciate you taking the time. I mean, shoot, I've delayed your trip home. How many how many more hours? Have hey you man, like home? I said, I thought this trip was gonna go another five days. So yeah. I'm I'm easy sailing. This was fun. I'm, I'm glad you. Uh, well, you I had, invited me to this. And I had no up. qualms driving 
four hours to get here to just sit down and chat with you. Well, hey, it I, was worth it. It's worth it, and it's worth the four hours. <laughs> You know, well, and honestly. plus, I've been alone for the last week, and I yeah. got to talk to somebody and show you my bucks. So. Two guys with no friends yeah. who can get along, right? Yep. Finally, conversation. Yeah. A couple of solo guys. No, that's good. I am, I'm glad to be the first to lay eyes on that deer. So yeah. Should we show, them, show everybody the deer one more time? Yeah, for sure. Ryan, yeah. that's a monster, man. He's a dandy, isn't he? Congratulations. I'm super happy with him. He's got so much character. He's just got knots and bumps and sticker here and it's just super heavy i mean couldn't ask for a better buck just a really heavy old buck old scarface buck so i think it's awesome this is what we go for I, it's funny you get a buck like this and this has just got like the prettiest velvet you know he's he's dried which is awesome yeah but uh but yeah you wonder what he'd be like if he was hard horned I'll tell you what, you it bladed out. Almost every one of these fingers is bladed. It's just. Can you picture a buck like that? A, like a wash, a mountain buck with a dark, <sighs> dark chocolate horns. just rubbed. Cause out here in the desert, he could be white horn. That's the know? dream. That dark chocolate. Oh, yeah, that, that is it. All these big knobby brows and stickers. And there's some critters out there in Nevada, man. I love this state. It's a and monster. it's August. It's not even, it doesn't even feel like deer season yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you got a couple more weeks of summer vacation and then you go back to hunting again. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's well, true. I got to go back and do some garden prep and make some spaghetti sauce, tomatoes, all that, and then go back to hunting, Tim. I'll tell you what, I am not, I'm not kidding. I am so intrigued by that stuff. It's not even funny. Like, I want to know more about it. And uh, it's, it's all things that I did growing up, and I just want to yeah. get back into that. And so I'm going to be, be hitting you up a lot. On that. Well, the thing about it is, like, we've tried incorporating that into my hunts, right? So yeah. making your own food with all that spaghetti sauce goes into making the spaghetti that would dehydrate. Dude, I was eating like a king up there chasing this guy around because it's all garden food and and it didn't have all the potassium and all the preservatives and all the sodium no and all the crap no, that, no it's everything that kills i put me. in it had like you know it had my own meat from last year um and basically everything out of the garden vegetables um you know whatever egg noodles you're using if you're making spaghetti or rice dishes or chili it's just it's sky's the limit whatever you want to make eat good and and um I'm sure some of this deer's meat will be going into that for uh, for next year's hunt. So yeah, heck yeah, it's a good process. So. Awesome, man. Well, I I'm uh, extremely grateful that I got to lay eyes on it and talk with you a little bit about this. I'm sure I guarantee you're going to be on some other podcasts and doing different things. And, and yeah, uh, hopefully I get to tell the story on our podcast and yeah. go over all the details and all that. It should be it should be pretty cool to relive that with my wife. Well, again, yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm glad I got to show this off to you first, and yeah. and uh, somebody got to see it. <laughs> Golly, dude, this deer is amazing. <laughs> Draw a deer tag, Tim. I Draw know. a deer tag. Here, I'm gonna get it and then get next to you, and we'll get a little <sighs> bit of a picture here. <sighs> Monster buck. Yep. And I'll just take a still from the video. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. That deer is incredible. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen one with that kind of. No, he's just bladed almost. Blades. Almost everyone has got a flat blade. That's got to be. It. What do you think? Eight, nine year old deer? He's old. His face was old. You could tell. Yeah. Yep. Just a pig. And with all this going on, I mean. He doesn't look regressed at all either. He looks just good and healthy and just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, yeah, he's solid. Can't believe it. I mean, just these little parts up here are just, <laughs> I could look at that all day. I'm curious what he scores, not that it matters, but I am curious. Yeah, yeah I'll run a tape. He's gonna have some inches in. in uh, it's all know, about gross, weight. man. It's all about gross. It's all about the mass. That's right. Girth. Girth. <laughs> yep. Well, let's let you get on the road. All right, get this guy all seat-belted in. I could sit and chat all day. <laughs>